So, I'll get straight to the point. These are next few videos, sort of, on the uh, individual component parts of the Type 31 frigate are meant to be shorter. So, they're going to be brief explanations, and sorry, that is a helicopter going overhead. Uh, brief explanations of what each component is. So, I'm going to start with the Mark 41 VLS. So, first off, it's probably worth explaining what a VLS is. So, VLS stands for Vertical Launch System. And the idea is that you have as many cells as is efficient. Uh, so, multiple cells. And each of these cells, which is in itself a small silo, uh, will contain one or more missiles. And that's dependent on size and configuration, generally. In any case, the idea is, they come out of these miniature silos, these cells, they launch, they clear the ship, and then they redirect to their target. So, in regard to sort of benefits of them, in comparison to what was before. So, what came before them was, I'm sure you've seen it, they employed them a lot on US warships, where you have, it's sort of a magazine reloadable uh, missile launching system. You either have one or two on a sort of pod, and it effectively points in the direction one wants it to fire, and it fires, but you can only launch one, maybe two at once. And while this may be, I guess you could say, perhaps more, it's probably faster in regard to actually reaching the target by a matter of a few seconds, which, you know, can matter largely in war. Um, and of course, you've got a magazine actually inside uh, the ship itself, so perhaps not so much exposed ammunition if you know precisely where to strike uh, and can gain ample penetration. But uh, basically that's what came before it. You've got this rotating turret which then fires a missile. The sort of benefits of using VLS is it's just, I'd say, better all round. So you've got one, a lower radar cross-section because you don't have this turret that needs to point around. Uh, it's more durable because you can put covers on top that are uh, armoured and you don't have exposed uh, missiles at any time. You have a greater number of missiles which can be fired at once because it's far more space efficient uh, and storage is just generally superior because you can fit them in vertically and you can effectively pack them in like sardines. It's also far more reliable. If you think about the former turret design, you've got a lot of moving parts in order to manoeuvre, uh, and it means you can, you know, by necessity fire pretty much any cell you want at any time, whereas you've got to actually, you know, use magazine reload for this turret. Uh, and just generally, it is a superior system. It's far more efficient. And it's where most navies seem to be going. So, and have gone. So, for VLS, you've got two types of launch. As they sort of come out of their miniature silos, these cells, you can have two launch styles. So you've got hot launch, which is, if you're picturing VLS, it's probably what you'd envision. It's uh, where the missile launches within the cell. It ignites within the cell and flies out. It fires out. Uh, and that's what you'd sort of expect, and then it redirects once it's cleared the ship. And then you've got cold launch, which is more uh, akin to a torpedo launch. So you'd use a gas generator, which would expel the missile via injection, via an ejection mechanism, which is achieved through injecting these gases into the cell. So if you look at any torpedo launch, you can see a puff of sort of a vapour as the torpedo comes out. It's very similar to that, only obviously higher pressure because it is a vertical launch rather than a more horizontal launch. And then there's a combination of both, which is called, what's it called, uh, concentric canister launch, I think. And again, I'm not 100% sure on that, but that can, you know, that's only really employed by China. Uh, and they have quite a few of those on their warships, but 
it's not necessarily so efficient because it's not cost efficient and it kind of defeats the purpose of you know efficiency within the vls design so in regard to hot and cold launch which for the west is the only real option and vls is sort of synonymous the mark 41 vls is synonymous with uh western naval missile launch you've got cold launch which i've said is uh gas generation and ejection and injection in order to eject the unit and then you've got this hot launch which is just firing out hot launch is simpler more affordable requires less maintenance in general uh, and that is the one that's largely used particularly for mark 41 vls but cold launch the only reason it's really employed is because it's generally safer there is no risk of or far diminished risk of explosion as it's ejecting as it's exiting its cell so in regard to the mark 41 vls it's used on the type 45 destroyer and type 23 frigate notably and it's going to be used on the incoming uh type 31 frigate so in regard to history it was developed by notably lockheed martin they're the main part partner but also uh martin marietta you know vastly vastly more secondary to lockheed martin and it was first developed for the us to use the rim 66 standard missile which i mean i will probably have to do a video on that at some point because that is just it's a missile that really does blow my mind because it's got both anti-air and anti-ship capabilities so i mean the versatility of that missile is just ridiculous anyway uh later the mark 41 has been modified and adapted for tomahawk use by the us which is largely what it's used for by the uk so you've either got really uh surface to surface missiles or surface to air missiles or put it this way it's either launching at land or at ships or into the air obviously so in regard to the mark 41's capabilities it started off with the ram 66 standard which of course it can launch but then it can uh launch room 67 standard room 161 standard three uh room 174 standard eram the tomahawk the rgm 109 uh the rum what's it called rum 139 vs VLASROC, which is an anti submarine missile, Sea Sparrow anti air, which is RIM 7, RIM 162 ESSM, and the Joint Strike missile. So it's got a lot of capability. For the UK, that's probably going to be Sea Scepter, which I'll do a video on later, and Tomahawk, and then potentially Scalp, but probably not because that's not currently employed by the UK. So the way Mark 41 sort of differs from, it is the original VLS model, but the way it sort of makes itself unique and continues to be relevant to this day is each missile is loaded into a larger canister and then each canister is divided into cells to hold individual missile units. So as we've sort of been talking about, it's this configurability, this adaptability to the needs of any specific weapon system that makes uh, Mark 41 still generally the most used VLS system of all countries, particularly of any Western states, Europe, America, uh, anywhere. So in regard to the canister size, based, it's based upon purpose. So there are three versions or three I guess you'd say configurations one can put in. The first is self def self defense, which is uh, more air to air. Then there's tactical, which is a combination of uh, air to air and anti ship. And then there's strike, which is anti ship, anti air, and I believe uh, surface to surface. So an actual sort of cruise missile that is meant to strike the land. So. To sort of 
go over everything. Uh, the main focus of the VLS system is on the Type 31 is the C-Scepter, which is uh, the more common anti-air modular missile for the UK, manufactured by MDBA, and I'm going to look at that probably soon. But it will also probably employ uh, the US Tomahawk missile, if not perhaps Scalp, if you know that is something that is made possible. But in any case, VLS is widely important not only for its configurability, but also largely for its ability to quickly react. That's an improvement from this more turret-based missile launch, both to anti-ship threats, uh, anti-air threats, and sort of strike operations. So I'm going to leave it there for now, and I think I'll probably talk about Sea Scepter next.